here's what I picked. This is just my things for a home lab. And here's the criteria that I set. Um, I've had a home lab before that was a server rack. Um, it was in my office. It drew a lot of power, made a lot of noise, generated a lot of heat. Mm -hmm. uh, it got old. So for my home lab, I want it to fit on a desk mm -hmm. neatly. I want to be able to plug the whole thing into a single power strip. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to hear it. Yeah, the very first question I asked Josh was, isn't everyone just taking home old stuff from work? Why are we buying that's what stuff? I did. <laughs> and that's what I did. So this is home lab stuff on a budget, not necessarily meaning it's free, mm -hmm. but it's it's price to performance ratio for me works. Mm -hmm. And it's not loud so your spouse isn't yelling at you. Exactly. Right? Like they don't even know it exists. Like you can hide all of this stuff. Okay. Like really easy. So first up, uh, this is the the super easy one. It's a Raspberry Pi. Right. Uh, Raspberry Pis are great. They're cheap. You can do fun things with them mm -hmm. in a home lab setting, run pie hole, run DHCP, uh, or just do something fun with the GPIO out. Mm -hmm. Um, I also like little, they're, they're not pictured here, but they're like the little ESP 8266 boards. Um, they've got Wi-Fi on them as well. They're cool. Okay. Um, next up, this is new. Uh, and I'll give credit for this one to Brooke upstairs. Uh, it's a little Asus store NAS. Mm. This thing is cool. He does have this upstairs. He's not lying. Yeah. And here's why this thing is cool. So it comes with a, it's a quad core 10 nanometer Celeron chip on it. It has 12 NVMe slots. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then it's got dual 10 gig ethernet. Here's the thing that I like about it. Right. <laughs> Uh, this thing is pretty cheap. You can pick these things up bare bones for like 600 bucks, which sounds like a lot. Then you can get some MME drives, but it's wicked fast. It sounds cheap to me. It's, it's wicked fast, right? Yeah. Because you get all of this, you can run the, the OS that comes on it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, or you can flash it with something like TrueNAS or whatever you want, but then you get full on iSCSI, NFS, Ceph. You can test all of the stuff you'd run at work, um, but on a smaller scale at home and it's silent and wildly power efficient. Yeah. So this thing is cool. We spec'd one of these out. We put like six M2 drives in it. We're actually running it upstairs. Yeah, he's not lying. I saw it upstairs. Uh, it's yesterday. our little Proxmox lab because yep. uh, we finally found a little GitHub repo mm -hmm. that mimics, it's a tool that mimics DRS. And that's the thing keeping us anchored to the awful VMware. Mm -hmm. So if it <laughs> works out, VMware. so if it works out, uh, we might be migrating. What? Yeah. Okay. But yes, it only comes with four gig of DDR4, but it's upgradable to 16. It's upgradable to 16. Yeah, because that's the only thing I was like, what? But I mean, okay, it's, it's a storage it. device, storage device only. Um, okay. And your M.2 NVMe. So okay. cache is, yeah. What's know. next? What's that seems next? pretty small for 12. NVMe drives in there? It's little. It's dual-sided. Mm. Like, so they're on both sides of it. Um, so you can get a, a ton of data out that way. Okay. Okay. Next yeah. up on the way of powerful, keep in mind this is powerful, uh, small, and quiet, is this cool company called uh, Minis Forum. So this MSA2 is a cool piece of tech. Um it's a small Ryzen 9, mm -hmm. um, and it comes up with up to 96 gigs of DDR5. Here's where it gets interesting. It's got dual port SFP plus on the back, mm. plus a couple 2.5 gig RJ45 LAN ports and Wi-Fi 6E. So this one does get a little expensive. Yeah, I mean, it's $1,200, Josh, but okay. It's, yeah. it is, it is a it's little expensive. It's on sale. <laughs> it is a little expensive, but getting that much compute and memory in this like thermal package yeah. plus power draw, it's, it's pretty hard to beat. Let's scroll up a little so we can see this, the specs. Yeah, here. So you can see all of these. They come yeah. in a bunch of them. They come in a bunch of different flavors, right? Uh, you can get a bare bone. You can put your own in. You can buy it directly here. These things are really, really neat. Um, I think they're cool. They yeah. come with a Thunderbolt ports built in. Um, that's what I would do for compute. Okay. So we're talking home lab on a budget, like all in. 
3,500 bucks, maybe $4,000 for a home lab that's going to last five, six, seven, eight years. Oh yeah. And, and run all of the same enterprise stack that you'd run at work. And then what's the last thing? Finally, always get questions about Cisco stuff. <laughs> yeah. Right. Always do. Okay. Because it's expensive. You mm -hmm. want to go get certified it. GNS3 is fine. Um, and it works pretty good. Okay. But uh, maybe you want the actual hardware. Here's where you can go get some gray market Cisco. Cables and kits. It. Cables and kits. Okay. It's gray market Cisco. Uh, you can buy the Cisco switches that you'd want to go get your CCNA, CCMP, whatever you want mm -hmm. um, for relatively cheap. Okay. Right. They're still loud. It's still a small Cisco switch. Uh, so like that 3850 on top for 300 bucks, it's still going to scream in your closet, but at yeah. least you have the 3850 to test on and it's the physical hardware. Okay. So why, and we, we were joking about this yesterday and I think this is a really good point to make. Why are you suggesting Cisco for people that might be new to networking? Because I would go the opposite way, like get your feet wet, start with something yeah. that has a GUI and you're like, no, go Cisco all the way. Yeah. Explain that. Can here's, you? here's my take. And it, maybe it's a hot take. Maybe it's not. Mm -hmm. Um, if you start networking mm -hmm. at the Cisco level, here's why I think it's good to start there. One, their framework for certification is actually a really good learning track. I'm not a huge proponent of certs, but their learning track for certs is really good. The fundamentals. The fundamentals. Mm -hmm. It starts you off in a way that makes a lot of sense for understanding the protocol, understanding networking, and actually what's happening on the device. Mm -hmm. So if you start there, um, it gives you this base of knowledge that you can then translate somewhere else. If you come at it from the other angle, right, and you start with networking with everything that has just like a GUI and you can click buttons and turn things off, sliders on and off, mm -hmm. it'll work. Mm -hmm. But then when it breaks one day, you don't have the fundamental knowledge of what is it doing? How do I fix it? So it's, it, for my opinion, you start at the basics. You start get at the, the low level. Get on the struggle bus. Get on the struggle bus, <laughs> figure it out. Because then as you start to abstract stuff away and you get GUIs and you get all of the other fun buttons and toggles and switches, mm -hmm. you know what they're doing. And I think we we figured out why I'm not good at networking because I didn't choose this path. <laughs> and that's why it's always the network fault. <laughs> that's true. All right. I like it. Okay. That's my home lab suggestions on a budget. Not free, not super cheap, but enough to run all of the enterprise stack that you want at home. Okay. I like quietly. it. Thanks for watching this segment from PDQ Live. If you like this, you'll love the full show. Check it out every Thursday at 10 a.m. Mountain. Oh, and like and subscribe, please.